What's good guys? It's illson 4 k and welcome to the second edition and very special edition of that of Terror Talk Gaming where we're going to talk strictly about terror video games. Yes, I started this show off with the Dead Space remake and unfortunately during the year of fear that was 2023, I was in the middle of moving to cover the awesome games that came out such as Resident Evil 4, Insomnia the Bunker, and a few other games. However, I did play Insomnia the Bunker on my Twitch channel which you can go check out, but other than that, I missed a lot. But thankfully I was able to get the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Texas Chainsaw Massacre is definitely a game you should check out if you're into online gaming or if you're into checking out the IPs that go with this because I myself am not really a huge online gaming guy but playing this game I see why people like it. 20 minute matches aren't really my thing but with this I had a lot of fun and I definitely see why this is such an addictive type of playing format but three killers versus four survivors is just perfectly balanced by the game designers gun and we're going to talk about why and a few other things why you should definitely check this game out so make sure you like and subscribe to the channel and remember it's ill tv where if it's pop culture you know it pops up here so the gameplay is pretty much the only thing you get. There is no plot, there is no one player mode, and unfortunately, unlike Friday the 13th, there is no one player challenge mode where you go out and try and kill people in a certain style or flair, reminiscent of the movie itself, but that doesn't take away from the fact that the three killer versus four survivor online format is executed perfectly. I mean, it's fair, it's balanced, nothing feels OP, nothing really needs like it seems like it needs to be nerfed yet. That being set aside, all of the characters you can pick are awesome. Starting off right away, whichever side you pick is really cool, but what's really cool is the individuality of each side. So if you want to pick a killer, for example, and you want to play as the hitchhiker, you have different abilities than, say, Leatherface. Leatherface has the ability, of course, to do a lot of damage when he hunts his opponents, the ability to destroy secret passageways, and also the ability to actually destroy furniture that other family members can't get over but the survivors can. The cool part is, you take someone like the Hitchhiker, who can actually sneak through the cracks that survivors can sneak through but Leatherface can't, and can actually crawl through the passageways that Leatherface can destroy, you start seeing how everybody is super balanced out. There's a lot of cool abilities in this game, especially if you play it online with microphones. For example, one of the killers has the ability to actually heal or hear where certain victims are in the, in the level and pinpoint their exact location. You can imagine having that ability with the microphone, being able to tell people, hey, they're downstairs in the basement, XYZ is closer to them, you could do a lot of damage. But likewise, when you're a survivor, there's also unique individuality, as some survivors actually have the ability to tackle and stun certain enemies in the game. Even Leatherface can be stunned by this attack. No one can be killed on the killer side, killers can only kill the survivors, but it's interesting to see how they added a balance with everything. Some characters have speed bursts, it's really cool because of course there's the ranking system which allows you to build your tree via the experience points you get online, just like there is with all these games, and you can actually make your character have the ability to handle certain affairs better. For example, in all levels there's the ability to actually feed Grandpa who is of course from the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre and drinks the blood, there's an ability to run around and gather blood as a killer and feed Grandpa and get him to the point where he can help you find the victims using his sonar. The more blood you give him, the more sonar he goes and the easier it is to find people until you actually get him all the way up where people are just located the whole time. Likewise, if you're actually a survivor, you can find Grandpa and beat him up and lower his levels. So again, everything has this really cool balance. Killers can lock doors, survivors can unlock doors, but the problem is, unlocking a door requires a lockpick and takes a lot longer than a killer would take to lock the door in a matter of time. The unique powers to the killers is also really, really unique, because like I said, the Hitchhiker can actually set traps, Grandpa can actually set up blocks, one of them actually has a poisonous mist cloud they can throw. The whole thing is really uniquely done to make it so that way if you're a killer, which is all I pretty much play as, that you have a really cool ability to add flair and style to what you're doing, whereas the victims have multiple ways to escape, such as, for example, turning off the electrified fence, using a pressure gasket with a valve that they have to find somewhere to open up another level. They can also just escape through the front door after the basement doors have been opened, which is a whole other affair. And it's just interesting to see all the ways you can get out, but all the ways the killers can foil you or wait for you or trap you into thinking you set something off and come around and turn the switch back on so that way you get electrocuted or something. Again, you got to play the game to really appreciate it because it's all human intelligence and you see the ability of learning the patterns of all the levels. Now, the levels is the last thing I'm going to talk about because unfortunately there's only four, but because there's only four, they actually have a morning effect, a dusk effect, and a night effect for each level, so it makes it a little different. And each level has different ways to escape, some of which are unique to that level. 
So again, definitely an awesome game. You got to check it out. The gameplay is very fair and balanced, so I definitely got to give that like a 10 out of 10. So it's kind of hard for me to review this kind of game because I'll be quite honest with you, I don't do online multiplayer games. Even the games I do own like Dying Light 2 or Elden Ring where they have a great one player mode and also fantastic multiplayer mode or co-op mode, I don't really do that. But I will say this, despite the fact that 99% of my hard drive is definitely devoted to single player games, the 1% of it that's devoted to online player games, again, is not Fortnite or anything like that. It's Friday the 13th, Dead by Daylight, and now this. And this is an awesome addition to that because it has its own thing where it makes its own lane out of a familiar substance. Again, the idea of three killers versus four survivors sounds really, really skewered in the favor of the killers. I mean, you have three killers that can't die, whose sole purpose is to go chase down victims who can die. And it's just, it seems so heavily OP in that favor. But to be quite honest with you, as a victim, it's a lot more fun and intricate, and you actually have a little bit more of an upper hand because you know where you have to go to get out. Whereas when you're a killer, you don't know where you have to go until you find the victims. You can hang around areas where victims might go and figure that out and become familiar with it, but it's not that simple because to be quite honest with you, these levels, while there's only four of them, are very disoriented and almost similar looking in a way where it becomes hard to become familiar with them. But again, if you're an experienced survivor or killer, you can really make short work of the way to get out or kill someone if you're smart. See, I play mostly as the killer, and I have a lot of fun, and I mean a lot of fun as Leatherface. Nothing is better than chasing someone down a dark corridor and knowing that they might be 50% getting away or 50% not just by where they're going. For example, maybe they'll run down a corridor and come to a locked door, because if you're a good killer, you lock the door, as you heard me say before, and they'll get slashed and killed by me in the area. Otherwise, they might be people who are more familiar with the surroundings than me and found a crack or crevice and run away through that. And again, it's just very awesomely well done to the point where it seems like you're not in the favor of picking a victim and having a good time. We have a good time as either the killer or the victim. And again, I'm just a huge fan of how they balanced this all out and made it feel like such a well-rounded experience. Because no matter who you pick or what strategies you do, there's always a way for someone to get away from someone. And there's no 100% way to just constantly kill and win. You have to be very smart and strategic and know where to send players. And again, the biggest part of this game is using a microphone to play it, because as you heard me just say, it's fantastic. That's really what I have to say about that. All in all, I gotta say the Texas Chainsaw Massacre was pretty much the most perfect game at the perfect time. As you heard me say in the beginning, 2023 was the year of fear, and this game kind of waited out the big releases before it finally dropped. I mean, it came out in August, but before that it had Resident Evil 4, Dead Space, Insomnia the Bunker, and a whole bunch of other games that came out, and it just waited and it finally came out and it was just what we needed. Because instead of some like crazy immersive story driven game, it's just a hack and slash game for 20 minutes where you both have the time of your lives. I mean, really, how much fun I have playing this game for someone who's not really into this genre is unbelievable. As I said, I mostly play as the killer, mostly Leatherface, because I'm cliche as fuck like that, but just all the fun I have. You can watch on my streams when I play this game how much fun I truly have. Nothing is better than catching the victim and finally getting away with it and murdering them, but again, most perfect game for the most perfect time. I was really getting a little drawn out on the single player mode of games, and this was just like a breath of fresh air that really made me have fun again. So again, if you're remotely into horror IPs, you should check this game out. If you're into P versus E gaming, you should definitely check this game out because it's really awesome. And more importantly, if you're into this video, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget, it's Horroween Month, which is a month-long celebration of horror movies that take place on or around Halloween being reviewed on my channel right here on Ill TV. And this is Terror Talk Gaming, a very special episode during that. So make sure you check out all the other videos. Make sure you like and subscribe and check out all the videos coming out this month as well because we're only halfway there. And make sure you subscribe and check me out every Thursday night on twitch.tv backslash illtv4k streaming for the Total Terrorathon Thursday where I play pretty much every horror game that I can out there. So again, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. It's illtv. You're watching Ill TV, where if it's pop culture, you know it pops up here.